we're talking about sloshing in this direction. Okay. So base is length, and base is L and height is B. All right, and if we have a subdivided tank, so same exact thing, Here is our tank and we partition it with a wall right here, all, running all along. Uh, all right, there are a few things in the chat. I'll, I'll get to it in just one second. So with the subdivided tank, um, you place a huge partition that runs all along the length of the hull. So you basically create two separate liquid levels. And now we have B over two, B over two, and the length of the hull is still L. Okay, now in this case, we have I of the tank, I total of the tanks is um, L B over two whole cubed over 12 times two, okay? So we have L B cubed over 12 times one over four. Make sense? Just by partitioning the tank using like a, uh, a plate running along the hull, you've dropped your, um, the loss by four times. Yeah. All right. Um, wouldn't, I mean, but now that you have two separate uh, liquid levels, they're both a rectangular shape if you're looking the top down. Wouldn't it? I don't know, it seems like you have to do the parallel axis theorem or something like that to get the total. Uh, I don't know, never mind. I think I, make, I think it makes sense. Uh, I just don't see how you. How, how you're still working on the same center axis. Oh, okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is this loss in GM doesn't depend on where you place the tank. Um, so let me note that here. So, um, loss in GM is the same. No matter where we place the tank. With the free surface. Okay, so um, this would be like placing a tank instead of centered uh, we, we place it shifted to the side. And due to the loss, due to each tank would be this term here. And since there's two tanks, we get two times the loss. So that's what's shown here. But in the, in the drawing on the left, where you have I tank LB cubed over 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the axis that it's about is is um wouldn't isn't the axis like right in the center of the width where b is okay okay so i understand what you're asking now so you're asking the the sloshing happens along this axis right so yes the the, the sloshing is basically this is your original and this is your slosh yes so this was your axis, okay? And when you look at it from the top, that's your rectangle that forms. So this is L on the side, B here, and you slosh about this axis. Is that, this part is okay, correct? Yes. Okay, now come here. Let's think about how these will slosh. So these slosh about their own axes here, not about the center, line of the hull. Make sense? 
Yeah. So, yeah, but okay. So I tank, I of this tank is about its own new, new. Um, it it's not about the center line of the hull. It's about the center line of the tank. So I will not change. It'll it'll be well. Computing I doesn't require parallel axis theorem because you're sloshing about your own center. This is B over two now. And this is still L. And this is our sloshing axis. Does that help why we have LB cubed over yeah, two? Yeah, I, I understand that. I just, it seems, it seems that when the way you calculated it and then just multiplied it by two, it seems like, it seems like you're still taking it about that cent center axis um because you have a rec you have you know a rectangle on one side and a rectangle on the other of that uh, hmm. yeah okay you know, if we don't have a tank on the left assume we only have a tank on the right the liquid within the tank would have this much is that okay Forget yes that. Okay. And so that that part is okay with you. Yes. Now we add another tank, no matter where we place it, but this other tank would also give us the same loss. Well, it would give us the same I value. So say these two tanks had a partition that was like five feet wide, you'd still have the same I. Five feet wide. Oh no! Here we are assuming the partition is very very thin. If you make it five feet wide, you have a new B. Okay, it would not be B over two and B over two. You subtract the five feet partition. You're 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 talking about the width of the partition. Yeah, like it seems like the way you calculated I total, it doesn't matter how far apart the tanks are. The, the distance between the tanks doesn't matter. It's just the geometry of the tanks matters. If you place a big, uh, very thick partition of five feet, like you were saying, the width of the tanks will no longer be B over two. You have to okay. subtract 0.5 here, 2.5 here. Okay. Better? Yeah, I see. Thank okay. You. And if instead of... Uh, Partitioning into two, you partition into three, this would become one over nine. And let's very quickly see that. So um, if we partition into three tanks, three subdivisions, then I total would be L B over three whole cubed divided by 12 times three, which is L B cubed over 12 times one over nine. Okay. And that's why we have the one over N squared in this general formula up here. Two subdivisions gives us one over four, three subdivisions gives us one over nine. Okay, we'll do an example um, in a bit, but let me first come back to your uh, installations. So let me see uh, one second. All right, so chat, chat, chat. Okay, so. All right, in the chat, uh, we have the questions. You get an error when trying to launch Ubuntu. Windows subsystem is not enabled. Um, does anybody else have the, was anybody able to launch the Ubuntu subsystem? Uh, mine appears to be okay. okay. Anybody else? How's yours? 
Okay, anybody else have this trouble? So, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, let me see. Mm, well, Google is the best solution for that. You have the same problem? Okay, so let's, let's see what Google says. So this is the error that some people get. Windows system for Linux is not any. Mm. Enable the option virtual machine platform if you're on. Okay. Go away. I think I got the same error. Oh, did you try this control panel? Can you try this? A program features, okay, so let me see. Uh, control panel. You think you could like send that link in the chat? Uh, yeah, let me one second. So no item. I'm not sure if that is up to date. So let me check the date. April 23, all right, so this should be fine. Here, Windows subsystem for Linux. So just go to control panel and tick this box. Go to control panel and just type Windows features. That should give you the win this. If you have Linux, uh, if you're working with the Linux OS, you don't need to do all of this. This is for enabling Linux in Windows. Mac users, I'm sorry, I didn't try, so I don't know. <laughs> What to tell you, but we'll we'll get to um, the actual software in one second. Okay, th does this work? You have control panel yes. in their search for Windows features. Yeah, programs and features, click that and it'll open this window. It says I need to reboot my PC after doing that. <laughs> so I guess I'll be back. Okay, yeah, so just reboot quickly and join in when, when you return. Do you see this window now? The window I have here? Okay, anybody else able to do this? All right, in, in class we have that, okay.
in chat somebody else sent uh, another link you can try that as well but the one we have here should work fine just make sure that's ticked you see it okay perfect and then does it tell you to reboot okay okay Yeah, I see many people offline, so they probably had to reboot. Okay, anybody else having trouble still? All right, I'll wait for like three, four minutes when until everybody's back again. Okay, those that are still online, any, uh, do you still have trouble? Yeah, I, I just have a question. I missed like the first two minutes of the lecture where you talked about the first part of the software when you download. So I was going to rewatch the lecture. Are we going to be doing an example that we need the software, this lecture for? I was going to rewatch the lecture and download it. Um, yes, it's better if you follow along because I'll show you how things work right now. Yeah, I just got lost when I was doing that earlier. I didn't want to stop you. So uh, it's just um, go to uh, Microsoft Store and search for Ubuntu 18. Okay, Ubuntu 18 and download that. This exact thing, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. There are other options, pick this one. Create an account for what? Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you open, uh, so those of you who have already rebooted, uh, when you first launch it, you have to create an account within Linux. And it doesn't have to be the same as your Windows. It's just give a username and password that you won't forget. So this would be Linux running inside Windows. It's not virtualization. It's actually part of Windows now. Um, okay, so now it's asking me for a username. I just got yeah. back. You, you create your own username and password, and you will um, yeah, just create something you won't forget. It can be the same as your Windows login. It doesn't have to be. Uh, those on Mac, um, uh, don't worry. I mean, these steps you don't have to do. We'll just download the open form directly. Um, but that of you, you, in, you should install on your Mac. So what happened? Yeah, in Linux, when you type the password, nothing shows up. So it's a security measure. How do you know if you're typing it in correctly? Uh, it'll ask you twice, re-enter your password. So if you re don't enter it correctly, it'll just do it, do a, do it all over again. 
I mean, in Windows, you get stars, right? So same thing, but right now you don't see the stars even. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah that doesn't help. All right, anybody else still having trouble? All right, so I'm assuming everybody has this, and please follow along right now, don't leave it for later. Because... All right, so let me, um, let me open the Linux terminal. So there's no um, GUI, there's no graphical user interface. Everything has to be done here, command line. So everybody has a command line like this. Okay. Type in PWD and then it should show home and your username. Yes, present working directory. Okay. I got that. Yeah. All right. Anybody have trouble? Okay. Okay. So um, you have at the moment you have Paraview installed. You have uh, Ubuntu installed. Now we need to download the uh, CFT software. To do that, everybody Mac, Linux, and Windows users just type in Open Foam. O R G. Okay. There's two versions of open form. There's one on openform.com. There's another on .org. We will use the .org version. All right, then go to uh, download and run on Windows. Uh, don't click anything yet. Just go to download and run on Windows. Um, Mac users, just go to op download and open from version 8. And here you should have, uh, where is the Mac? Ah, here. So Linux users do this. Uh, no, Linux users don't do this. Okay, don't download version 8 because I'll show you one. Mac users, try this. I've never tried this before, but hopefully it works for you. Any questions? Windows, Linux, Mac, anybody? Again, Windows and Linux users do not download anything. Mac users, try this. I have not done this before, but it should work for you. Okay, so Windows and Linux, all right? Uh, we go to the same place because the same commands will be used. In that terminal, we need to copy paste all of these one by one. So copy and go into the Linux terminal, right, right click and paste. Oh, did I miss something? Add what? Oh no, okay, that's fine. So hit that and enter. Uh, it'll ask for the password you just created with your username and password. Did everybody get that? Yeah. Okay, anybody have trouble? Okay, do the same for the other commands. All, all the lines in here have to be copied and pasted.
Okay. The last command install open form eight that will download the actual program and install it. But you have to do it in the series it's given on the website. The first line, the second line, third line, and fourth line. Do it for open form eight. Do not do it for open form dev. Okay, that's unstable. So do it for the, this guy, these four lines. Um, once you type it in uh, and hit enter, it'll install it. But I already have it installed, so it'll say nothing to do. Okay, what does it do on your computer? Okay, and does it say downloading, downloading? Okay, okay. Yeah, that should take, uh, well, a few minutes, depending on your internet speed. That this applies for both Linux and Windows users. So you, you do the same commands because both of you should have Ubuntu. Oh, I'm assuming Linux users have Ubuntu. So still installing, right? Okay, so while it installs, let's go and check your Paraview installation. So uh, all, all three operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, just type in, um, just open Paraview. If your installation was fine, with this, there's usually no trouble. You should see a window like this. Yes? I didn't bring my mouse, but whatever. Okay. So um, at the moment, you don't have anything in uh, to visualize, but as soon as your open form finishes installing, I'll show you what to visualize. So, but in the meantime, let me just um, show you how this works. So, um, yeah, so see, that's an STL file. Um, with most CAD programs, you can export an STL file. And when you open that, this is our hall. Yeah. So uh, let me just change that. Okay, perfect. So that's the hull that we will simulate. And eventually you'll replace this hull with your own design. Everybody, Paraview works fine. I mean, it opens fine. I'll, I'll show you how to, once you finish installing um, OpenFoam, I'll show you how to where to find this model. I need to install uh, PowerView. Say that once more. I'm installing the PowerView, PowerView. Okay, and um, you know where to download it, correct? Yeah. You need to use the non-MPI version. Okay, anybody else? Any trouble? Yeah, I'm way behind, but I'll have to go back over the uh, the recording to catch up because I don't want to slow everybody down. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Uh, things are still downloading. So tell me which step you have trouble in. Well, I'm having trouble finding the control panel in. Um, All right, here. Do you have this? in your Windows thing? No? Do you have a search bar? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh -huh. Type control panel in there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But I, I already did that and it didn't work. And it doesn't open control panel? I'll do it again. All right. Uh, 
The power view I have is power view dash 5.9 windows dash Python 3.8 dash MSVC 2017 dash 64 bit dot exe. That's okay. not working. Uh, when I try to install it, it's like not working. What does it say? Um, it tells me I have to like abort the installation because some files weren't working. I don't know. Did it install some Maybe oh, the dot exe one uh, wasn't the right one. I should do the other one. Uh, try, uh, but do not use the MPI version. So what you said should be fine. Try the other one, the zip file. Other people, Windows, Paraview install worked okay? Yeah, it worked. Okay. On Mac, it should also be fine. If you have trouble, tell, uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, how, do we, how do we get to Paraview again? Because I had to restart my computer. How do you get to Paraview? Yeah, to install it, to download it. So go to the, para, the download page and um, so let's see, let me, okay. When you go to the download page, you have the option to pick Windows, Linux, Mac. You just pick Windows and use either the first one or the second one, these two. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. All right, so let's see, who was having trouble with the control panel? Uh, was it Tom? Yeah, I still can't get it. Oh, you don't see the control panel window. You don't see this window at all. The one that's on my screen right now. Uh, no, I could get that maybe something similar to the settings, but. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. So um, let me see, are you able to share your screen? Yeah, I can share the screen. Okay, so if you share it, we'll see what's happening. Okay. You've disabled the uh, sharing mode for the host. Uh, weird, okay. Uh, allow to record files, remove, board, blah, blah. Oh, um, weird, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I guess the default setting is disabled. Let me see, allow participants to rename. Nope, there's no way for me to. If you go to the drop down on the share screen button at the bottom toolbar, you should be able to do it, the little arrow on the in the corner. Oh, here, all participants, okay. All right, try again. Tom, you're mute. Oh, okay, perfect. So let's see. Okay, snip, sketch, no, don't need this, okay. All right, and oh, okay, perfect. So can you hit the, the top right, the second button, the one below that? Hey. Oh, okay, I was using the wrong search button. I was using the one up here. Okay, Just type in control panel there. Here? No, oh, just start typing control panel. Oh, I see. Hit enter. Right, then in the top right search bar within this window, type in Windows features. On the right corner, there's a search bar. Windows features. 
Yeah, I know it, it's all bogged down for some reason. Okay, hit that. Oh. Yeah, that one, click it. Oh, okay. So click, click the turn windows features on or off. Don't click the green thing. Uh, he clicked the green thing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there, turn windows features on or off. There, you see on the left? Yep. Yeah, click that, scroll to the bottom. There should be the Linux thing. Then you have to reboot. Boy, this is really going slow. I have too many things open, I think. But I'll have to turn them off anyway to reboot, so. Scroll, scroll down. Okay, what am I looking for? The... Uh, Go to the bottom, all the way. Then you see Windows subsystem for Linux. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, then it'll ask you to reboot. Okay, so anybody watching the recording later, you do the same thing. All right, now you can stop sharing. All right, everybody else, uh, is your Linux um, installing Ubuntu or is it done? <laughs> The open foam is still unpacking for me. Okay. And anybody already installed open foam? Mine's also still unpacking. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it might take a while. Okay. So, um, uh, again, Linux users do the same steps as we did in this terminal here. Um, and so let's see, I guess it'll take some time to install and uh, we'll, we'll pick up again with the software on Friday. Mac users, please try and install open foam on your Mac. If you have trouble, email me separately. I know there's like two or three of you. Any questions before we go back to pen and paper? All right, so yeah, let's go. It finished? Oh, okay, we have one that finished. Okay, then maybe the others would will finish soon too. Anybody else finish? I'm not sure how to get the power view open. It installed okay. There was no problem installing. Uh, it was just like a zip, um, a bunch of folders. Uh, well, you unzip it and then install it unless it already works. Yeah, I, I don't know why you're having trouble. So, okay, but um, try and ask me again on Friday. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, running natively. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. My uh, open form just finished too. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So a few people's open form has finished. So uh, uh, many of you will catch up also. Let me see. Um, Mac users, were you able to install open form? No, I'm still working on that. It requires an additional install of something called Docker before we can get open form. Okay, yeah. okay. so um, all right. Then um, yeah, follow those instructions. But once you have it, uh, I'll, this uh, I can show you how, where stuff is. So um, we have to do one more step. Let's go back to the open form website. And I'm still recording the video, right? Yes. No, don't uh, don't use compilation tools. This is the these are the two lines you need, okay? Copy this, both Mac and Windows users. No, <clears throat> Linux and Windows users. 
Mac users also have to do something similar, but not this exact. So copy this and come in here and paste it and hit enter. Okay. Do you do it? Okay, then one more step we need is the next guy, this one. Copy this, paste and enter. Okay? That's fine, it's not supposed to show anything. Okay? It's just setting up the environment. This is just one time you do this, then everything is set up. Next, to check if things work, copy this and paste and see if you get a message. Work. You should get a list of messages when you do that. If you don't, then the install didn't work. What happens? You got the message? So your CFD software is installed. Anybody else get the message? So these are the last steps, echo, dot home, and after that, you just test whether the install worked fine. That's this command. Anybody else? It, you said not to install the, 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 the dev package, right? For Correct. You install this open form eight. The other one is called open form dev. Version eight. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let me know when this works for somebody else. Or if it doesn't work, you, you tell me. Okay, we have one that works. There was somebody else whose install had finished. Was it Daniel? Yeah, I'm getting a weird permission deny uh, issue, so I'm working through that right now. Okay. Okay, uh, so um, you basically come to this step and make sure you get this message, then everything is fine. If you don't get it, we'll, we'll need to troubleshoot. Uh, but do try to get to this step uh, before next class. Next I just class, got there. Okay, perfect, perfect. Because next class I'll show you actually how to run a simulation, okay? So any question before we switch to pen and paper? All right, let me switch to the other screen. Yeah, to close the Linux thing, you just cl close the terminal, no, nothing else. Yeah, it's, it used to be very clunky, but now it's beautifully integrated. Uh, I'm going to uh, start an example with this free surface business and let's see how far we will go. All right, so let me write the question first. So we have a 40 meter long. 10 meter wide, five meter deep, rectangular barge.
<clears throat> Great, so we have a barge, a rectangular barge, and it has a fuel tank. Okay, perfect. Okay, and uh, in the fuel tank, we have oil. And then the dimensions of the tank are, so the tank is 15 meters long. It is centered at midships. And then we're given kg is four meters. And the question is, how many partitions? Right, so um, we're given the dimensions of the barge. We're told it has a partially filled tank with filled with oil, and we're given the size of the tank. And uh, uh, Presumably, the tank makes our barge unstable because we are asked, how many partitions should we divide the tank into for it to be stable? Okay, so let's draw a sketch. We have a rectangular barge, so that's nice, easy to draw. And let's mark what's given. So this is 40 meters. This is 10, five. All right. And we're told K G is four meters. All right, then we have a tank in there. Um, so let me try and three dimensionalize this thing. Okay, perfect. So we have a tank somewhere over there. It's the fuel tank. This thing is 15 meters long. 
runs the whole width of the ship and it's centered at midships. Okay, fine. And the row of the oil inside is 0 0.9 ton per meter cubed. Okay, so one thing to remember is we don't care how full the tank is. Uh, we don't care whether the level inside the tank is one meter or whether it's two meter. We just care that there is a free surface that can slosh about. Okay. So I see we are almost out of time. Let's uh, do this example on Friday. Any questions? All right, so I'll leave this here for a minute and then I'll see you, you guys Friday. See you guys.